That is 60 pounds of honey. And we're gonna, we're gonna use 12 pounds, which is approximately one gallon in the carboy to make five gallons of mead. This will be apricot mead. So the honey is all crystallized and we're gonna, we're gonna rethink our idea here. We're gonna get this into the hot water up to a certain level and hope we, we're shooting for the five gallon mark. And we don't know if we're gonna hit that or not. We made this meat yesterday with about one gallon, a little over a gallon of honey. And here's the mangrove jacks yeast we're gonna put in. She was just way too warm to do that. And I like the new yeast packs, you just rip them open. You don't have to use scissors on them. So on the five gallon batch of apricot mead, I'll get the yeast in this one. The bubbler's still act, uh, active on both of the meads here. So 18 days later, both meads are still gurgling away. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on those tiny little bubbles. You see the flashing of the GoPro. <laughs> We're going to take the dress off the mead that we made in uh, uh, January 21st. And this will be the first racking. Today is March 6th. And we'll let it flow. Perfect amount. So, all right, what we're going to do today is we're going to mix up some betonite clay. We're going to get that ready to put into our mead, to uh, clarify the mead. And I'm going to take the betonite and I'm going to squirt it right in here with the, my little jug. Here we go. And that's all there is to it. After all that bet might have stirred up with my homemade stir. And you don't have to go crazy. I'm not the gas. And Although it will the gas a little, you can see it coming out of the top. Okay, we're gonna wrap the ap rack the apricot mead for the fourth time, and we're gonna get a reading and make sure we're. Uh, let's see where we sit here. We got the hydrometer in. We'll take this little tube, test tube here, and we'll get it full. Ten. 1022, she hasn't moved in the past month. So this, this mead is done. 1022 she's at, so we're gonna hit it with a little bit of metabisulfate for uh, preservation, to preserve it, one quarter teaspoon. That's in. <clears throat> And then we hit it with, uh, this is our, our sweetener, our apricot sweetener. We're going to put that in right now. Fourth racking. I'm going to sanitize it first. <clears throat> this came out of the sanitizer. Oh, oh that's apricot, all right. And we just dump that in like that. <sighs> yeah. 
apricot mead, the apricot uh, uh, extract is in. And I don't know if you can see from the last video, she got a little cloudy because I picked up a little bit of the trube out of this one here. I got to go in and wash it out. That's the sediment left uh, that the bentonite dropped out there, the rest of the yeast and everything else. But this uh, restir a little bit in the, in, the, uh, in the solution. So it'll take a couple more days to clear again, but uh, we'll wait a month. So yeah, 11, 11 and a quarter percent she came out. So we'll be bottling this, so I don't know, I'll give it another month, that's what I do. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? It has been two and a half weeks since we added the bentonite clay to our apricot mead. And uh, we're showing right through the carboy here. What we see in the background is Faywood mead. She, she makes meads of all different types. This is an apricot mead she's making. But that's how clear she is. As I back out of there, you can actually see she's in my carboy, and she's uh, she has cleared up really, really nice with the bentonite clay. All right, after six months, we're showing uh, how clear the meat is. Why wouldn't I? Let's get a close up on what's going on here. So in the background, we have uh, Mr. Bumpy Road Brews. This is uh, actually a shout out to Bumpy Road Brews, or is it the clarifying of my mead? Well, it's both. Why wouldn't it be? How you doing? That's how I clean my bottles with a homemade bottle cleaning wand. Of course, I'm making a mess here. Wash an O-ring for the sink drain. <coughs> but, uh, in case you guessed it, we're bottling mead today. Why wouldn't I? Seven months to the date, our apricot mead is done. Uh, this is called Cortex Remover 2. This is the second uh, five gallon batch we made. And these little flies are gonna really tick me off. So we're gonna get this undressed because today is bottling day after seven months. She's clear as a whistle. So we're gonna get on with it. The wife is filling the bottles, and I'll put the cork in them. After seven months, let it overflow a little bit. You know, that was a lot. <laughs> and I'll put the cork in them. As easy as this. There's one. Does this fit in this box? You have to fold. No, not. You have to fold the sides down. <laughs> So you want to use that box over there? Yeah, I have this one set up Yeah, after seven months, we're finally bottling the apricot mead. And you can see how clear that is. I don't want to drop it. And that's clear as a whistle. All our bottles are sanitized fully. We submerge them in the, in the sanitizer. Totally. After washing them with the drill, you see that. Here comes our second bottle. We're not going to bore you with all the bottling because we're going to show how we do our labels. Get it over here. <coughs> Take our sanitized cork. Pump it in there. So there's two down. I'll wait till the wife gets these out of the way. Apricot mead, 24 bottles we got. We're all bottled after the seven months sitting in the carboy. It was treated with metabisulfate for uh, uh, a preservation there uh, on the uh, third racking or fourth racking. So there she is, nice and clear. You can see through it. Everybody saw that on the last video. I print my own labels for my meads and my wines. And uh, you print them on an inkjet printer. And to protect them before you put them on with milk, you spray them down with some clear enamel, clear lacquer, whatever you got. And it's as simple as that. And when you put it on with your milk, they will not run. The ink will not run. I've been doing this for years, and it works perfect.
that's it for 24 labels. Now we just got to apply them to the bottles. Final stages of the apricot mead is putting on the labels and off to the side here. Oh, it's almost spilt. We have a, a plate of milk. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. A plate of milk. We take the label, we stick it right in there, cover the whole thing, doesn't matter. Take it to our bottle, make sure the seam is not facing where the label will line up to, if you know what I mean. That's pretty common sense to say. Just push it down there and hold it for a second or two. And then take a dry rag and put it over the top of it. Push it down. Hold it for, I don't know, whatever the camera's telling me. The dry rag helps dry out the, the label. And you just push it down and, and work some of that milk out of there. So I guess that's about 15 seconds or something. Maybe right in there. And that's it. One label on. Then I take a bleach rag and I just wipe it a little bit like that. Just so the bottle's clear. And we get it over to the side. And uh, we don't bore you with the rest of them, but that's how you do it. Put the label in the milk. Take your bottle. Make sure the... Uh, Make sure the seam is not facing towards you, like I said. You don't want the, the label to go over the seam. Turn the seam to the side. And that's how she goes. There you have it. Five gallons of apricot mead bottled and labeled, ready to go on the wine shelf. And uh, why wouldn't I? It's just crazy, ain't it? Ain't it? It's just crazy, man. <laughs> After eight months, eight and a half months, we finished the uh, apricot mead, and we bottle it, and we got the labels on it, and now it's time to get a taste test on it as we come into September here after eight months. Let's see if I can do this right. Oops. I always screw this up. Down. And then up. Out comes the cork. It's only been in there a couple weeks. So this is what it looks like. That's the label. I think everybody saw that. I'll try to zoom in on it for people, whatever. And here comes the taste test. Let's get a glass for the white first. And this is a still mead, apricot mead, and a glass for me. These are both, either, both, both the same glasses. So here we go. It's a golden color. And uh, you can see the alcohol legs on it. No question about that for 11 and a quarter percent. Make sure that label's still out there. Nice, clear honey color. The smell of honey. Slight apricot. I use an extract in here. We're going to get a taste on that as soon as I burp. <coughs> Maybe we'll edit that out or not. So, the you know, legs on there is amazing for 11 and a quarter percent alcohol. The camera's probably never going to pick that up. I can try zooming in on that, but oh, man, I usually delicious. spill it. So, I swirl it around in my glass and get a smell on it and on the nose. You can smell the alcohol, the apricot, and the honey. So, uh, it finished at 10.22 which left a little bit of sweetener behind, which we don't have to uh, back sweeten. Here's the taste. Here's the wife got hers already. Oh. Outstanding. Oh, that don't drink like 11%. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. Definitely. Definitely. It's a lot lower than my original Cortex remover, which I think was almost 17%. This at, uh, at 11 and a quarter percent drinks a lot a lot better. It drinks a lot smoother. The wife says a lot smoother, yeah. So here we go again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an awesome mead. You guys out there can do it. This was eight months. I let it sit. This is the ending of the video, so well worth making at 11 and a quarter percent. So I'm going to sign off with this because uh, this is two minutes and 53 seconds already. This has been one long video I tried to show from start to finish. I brought up the other parts of the videos when we first started it, and, and we uh, showed the making of the mead. 
So we're going to sit back and uh, we're going to enjoy this and actually uh, watch the football game here. I, I forget the team. We got the uh, Cincinnati and Cleveland playing right now. Mm. Definitely. Definitely awesome. Roast. It don't taste like alcohol at all. No, it's delicious. Ching! Roast. Let's do that again. Ching! Roast. Roast. 